We are at the People's Climate March. It's historic. It's right here in Washington, D.C. The weather, uh, it's above 90 degrees. It is expected to be one of the hottest days in Washington, D.C. in history. And, you know, that's part of why people are out here marching, have come not only from any, every corner of the country, but of the globe. What's happening behind us, we're on Pennsylvania Avenue, thousands of people have begun to march, and they're going to encircle the White House and sit down. I'm Amy Goodman with Nermeen Sheikh, and we're here bringing you the voices of the march. And we're joined now uh, by two guests. Can you introduce yourself? Yes, my name is Neri Carrillo. I am Verda Cáceres' sister. Um, I am very, very happy to be with you and tell you about my sister that we have. Let me just say, Berta Cáceres, the Honduran environmental leader who was gunned down in her home in La Esperanza in Honduras. She was a Goldman Environmental Prize winner fought for her community. Um, where do you live? I live in Arlington, Virginia. For, um, I came here in 1972. Um, when it was very hard to hear that my sister was killed. And only thing I can ask you is to tell the government of Honduras to to do the justice, to do the right thing and find the killers of my sister, but the intellectual killers. They have eight people in jail, but they the one they, they want to kill her, they pull the, the gun on her. But I asked the government of Honduras to to do something about it and, and put the people as responsible for her for her death, which Hernandez, uh, President Hernandez should know about this. And he justice. is he is he is the president of Honduras, Juan Orlando. And why don't you introduce yourself? You've also been working uh, on uh, Berta Caceres and what's happening in Honduras. Uh, hi, my name is Melissa Cox. I am a Latin American solidarity worker, and right now um, we are calling for justice in, in the case of Berta. Justice for Berta means the Berta Caceres Human Rights in Honduras Act, which is legislation in the House of Representatives right now. Uh, it is calling for a suspension of U.S. security aid to Honduras, $18 billion in security aid. Right now, we have—it uh, was introduced by Representative Hank Johnson. We have 51 co-sponsors currently. We're asking that people call their representatives and urge them to sponsor the bill. Uh, the bill will call for suspension until which time Honduran government can—the uh, Honduran security forces cease human rights violations, bring the perpetrators to justice of human rights violations, including the intellectual authors behind the assassination of Bertha Cáceres. Bertha Cáceres his sister in 1972 had to flee Honduras because of the violence there, and we have not had policy shifts for decades, and so that's why we're seeing so many people come here, and so we're asking for people to support this bill, as well as call for an independent investigation. Uh, hundreds of organizations in the U.S., as well as in Latin America, are calling for an independent uh, investigation to the murder of Bertha Cáceres. Can you tell us about why Berta got so interested in the environment, why your sister? Well, she was, uh, since she was 17 years old, she used to see, my mother is uh, a midwife in, in, in her country, uh, and Bertita was only 17 years old when she saw the misery which the Lenca people was going through, that they have no, um, there was the poorest area in, in the um, Lenca, the Lenca people. Uh, so she got um, involved in that. She was since she was uh, 17 years old, and she is the founder of the Copin, which he helped the uh, all the Lenca um, ethnics and uh, all the um, people who has no words and very poor and they cannot have a voice into the government of Honduras. That is the sister of Berta Cáceres. Neri Carillo and activist Melissa Cox speaking at the People's Climate March in Washington, D.C. To see our full five-hour broadcast from the streets of Washington, D.C., one of the hottest days, one of the hottest April 29ths in D.C. history, you can go to our website at democracynow.org. And that does it for our show as we continue our community media and book tour around the country. I'll be speaking tonight in Durham, North Carolina, at 7 p.m. at the Eno River Unitarian Universalist Church. On Tuesday, we'll be in Miami, 6.30, at the Coral Gables Congregation. 
Congregational Church, then on to Wednesday in Tampa at 7.30 p.m. at the Seminole Heights United Methodist Church, on Thursday in Atlanta at 7 p.m. at the First Iconium Baptist Church, on Friday at 2 p.m. at Carleton College in Minnesota, and at 6.30 p.m. at Augsburg College in Minneapolis. On to Saturday, we're in Madison, and then the evening in Chicago, on Sunday in Kalamazoo, Lansing, and Grand Rapids, Michigan. Check our website for all the details, democracynow.org. Democracy Now, produced by Mike Burke, Dean Guster, Nermi Chay, Carla Wills, Laura Gattis, Diener, Sam Alkoff, John Hamilton, Robbie Karen, Honey Masood, Trina Nadura, Andre Lewis, special thanks to Dennis Moynihan and Renee Feltz. I'm Amy Goodman. Thanks so much for joining us.